Hey guys, Bernardo Productions here, and welcome to a new Java series. In this series, I'll be teaching you or demonstrating how to create the Snake game in Java. Now, for you, the, for those of you that are unaware of what Snake is, um, Snake is essentially a, a small game where you're a snake and your goal is to eat dots, if you will. And every time you eat a dot, you grow, um, and you can crash into walls or crash into yourself, and then you end up losing. So, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to start learning, or I'm going to start teaching you how to actually make this snake game. So first of all, before we actually get right into the coding, let's go ahead and make a plan. So I'm going to open up Microsoft Paint here and go ahead and lay out a quick plan. So before you make any sort of game, you need to make a plan on how you're actually going to make it. So I'm just going to demonstrate the logic that I'm going to use behind this in order to actually make this game. Okay, so in our game, we're actually going to have a grid. So we're going to draw a grid on the screen and the grid is going to consist of lines, of course. So we're going to have um, some lines that go straight down. These are not straight um, this way. And then we're also going to have some lines that go straight across horizontally in order to create a grid. So before we actually coding or start coding the logic of this game, we need to declare several types of items that can actually fill the grid. So the first type of item is actually going to be a fruit. So there's going to be green fruits that you're going to be able to pick up. Or for now, we're just going to have them be um, black dots. Okay, so let's go ahead and outline this. So types of items, we're going to... Ooh, that is way too big. Um, come on, font. Let's go. Okay, so for some types of items here, we're going to want to have a fruit. Gross, let's make that black, please. Um, a fruit, we're also going to need, of course, the snake, uh, the snake body part. And we are go we're also going to want to have empty space. So these three items um, will actually be created. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually put our project into a, an array. So what we're going to have is we're going to actually plop down points on, or we're going to actually plop down things on certain points. So what we're going to say is, for example, on points, whatever this is, I think this is 8, 1, or something like that, um, we're going to say that we have the body, or the object type fruit there. And all this, these are just going to simply be enumerations of, um, of the, like, they're going to be enumerations, so they're not actually going to be objects, but instead it's just going to be a point pointing to that enumeration. Alright, so um, we're going to name these enumerations tile type, or something like that. On top of this, on top of this um, fruit being here, we're also going to have the snake traveling across. So, um, let's go ahead and draw the snake. So what we're going to do is, whoops, is since we have the snake traveling across, let's just see currently our snake is three blocks wide. Um, Normally, how you would think what would happen is every turn um, that occurs, instead of actually, or in order to move the snake, what we need to do is we need to take each body part and actually move it over one cube. So, whoops. So here, we would take this body part, and we would move it over, and we'd take this body part, and we'd move it over, and for some reason, it's not moving it, it's just taking it. So, you get the idea. Um, <laughs> we would have to move over every body part. Except, in order to make our snake easier, what we're going to do is we're going to also have a directions list. So we're going to have a direction object. And this direction object is going to keep track of what direction the snake is currently traveling in. So we're going to have north, south, east, and west. So this is the direction object is going to be determined by what the user presses on their keyboard. So for example, if the user presses up, um, the direction is going to change to north. So how we're going to work the snake moving is instead of actually moving the each body part across, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new head, for example, a new point um, on top of or on, in the direction that this uh, that the user has actually suggested. So if the user says north by pressing the up arrow, we're going to put a body part above the head here, and then since now we have one too many body parts, we're actually just going to go ahead and chop this one. So now we have the illusion of the snake actually traveling across the screen when all we're doing is adding body parts in the front. So since the direction is still north, um, that's going to go ahead and add another body part. Whoops. That's going to go ahead. So for the next turn, 
the next body part is going to be added, and then the last one is going to end up being chopped. So in two turns, we've pressed the up arrow, and new items were actually added to the top of the snake, um, uh, and items are deleted from the back. So once again, this creates the illusion that um, uh, we're actually moving across the screen. Now as soon as this new item is created, what we need to do is we need to actually, for example, right here, we're going to actually need to check uh, check what kind of box we're in. So say, for example, we travel all the way up to this food item, we're going to need to check what is already in that box before we travel in it, of course, because once we travel in it, it's going to be a snake body that's in that box. And once we do that, we can add another uh, body part onto the body, and then we'll be all set. So we can go ahead and drop right into the coding. So let's go ahead and slide this over to my other monitor and go ahead and start a new project. So I'm just going to press New Java Project and I'm going to name this Snake Tutorial. So in our Snake Tutorial progress, I'm, or project, I'm just going to right click, press New, and then Class. And I'm just going to create a new class that's going to contain all of our data. So this class is going to be called Snake Canvas. Why is it called Snake Canvas, you may ask? Well, because what we're actually going to want to do is we're going to actually want to put our Snake um, application here on the web. Which means that if we actually want to put it on the web, uh, what we want to do is we want to actually make this a canvas. Now, if we didn't want to play it, put it on the web, we could actually make a desktop version out of it. However, that's a simple conversion, so what we're going to do is after we make our canvas version, we'll make a desktop version. So we can go ahead and get started right away by making our canvas actually a canvas. So we're going to extends the canvas class. And that is not how you spell extends. <laughs> so it's going to extend this canvas class. Now what is the canvas class, you may be asking? Well, if you create an applet, the stuff that you're actually putting inside of the applet is painted within a canvas. So the applet is just essentially an applet, while the canvas is the content. So we're pretty much building the content of our applet that we're going to be building. So we're just going to go ahead and let Eclipse import our canvas here. And now we can go ahead and start working from our plan. So if we slide our plan over, we can see that what we need first is we need a, um, a class that will contain all of our actual tile types. So what we're going to do is we're going to say new class, and we're just going to name this class tile type. And inside of this tile type, what we need to do is we actually need to create an enumeration. So each enumeration is going to be linked to an integer. Um, if, you haven't, if you don't know what enumerations are, they're essentially clever ways of disguising integers. So we are going to actually make three different tile types here. So we're going to say public, static, um, final, fruit, oh, public, static. This is going to be an integer, int, public, static, int, final. No, it's public, static, final, int, fruit. And we're going to make this equal to 0. We're also going to have a public static final int snake body, and we're going to set that equal to 1. And we're going to say public static final int um, empty equal to 2. Actually, we're going to change these around, so empty is equal to 0, and fruit is equal to 2. And this uh, is, I just realized I typed type type instead of tile type. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the refractor, rename it to tile type, and... Um, now we've got our tile type enumerations. So now the next thing that we need to do in our snake canvas class is we actually need to add our objects. So the first thing we need is we actually need a snake um, object. So we're going to say private. Um, and so what we need is we need a list, essentially, of points that will actually hold our, um, our snake. So we're going to say private um, linked list of points, and this is going to be called snake. So it's going to go have uh, go ahead and have us um, import our linked list here, and then once we import our linked list, we can go ahead and import point. So if you didn't know, a uh, point is actually a built-in class of Java, which represents an XY location, and a linked list is essentially just like a uh, an array list, but it is more efficient for what we were going to be using for. 
Um, because what we need to do is simply read our objects from first to last, and that is essentially what a linked list does. It only reads from first to last. Whereas an array list, we can access random objects. Well, in a linked list, we read first to last, and that's all we need to do in our in our snake game. So now that we have our snake, um, we also want to have our um, 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 so we're also going to want to have our, you know, our our grid where the snake actually is. So what we're going to want to do is we are going to open one to put this into one giant project. So we're going to have our uh, snake here, and he's going to consist of several points. And then on top of this, we are going to have um, our grid that the snake is actually traveling across. So we need to actually draw our grid onto the screen. So we can go ahead and do this, and this will conclude part one of how to make snake in Java. So the first thing we need to do in actually <laughs> in able to actually make our grid onto the screen is we're going to say create a draw grid method. So we're going to say public void draw grid. And of course, this is going to take in a graphics object. Why is this going to take in a graphics object? Well, because what we want to do is we're essentially going to create a draw method that will draw everything on the screen. And so one of the components of the drawing is we're actually going to want to draw the grid. And the draw method is going to have its own graphics that draw onto the screen. So what we want to do is actually create a graphics parameter that we can send in here. So the draw method will send in a graphics. So then what we want to do with the draw grid method, in fact, let's go ahead and create that draw method. So we're going to say public void draw. And that's just going to take in graphics G. OK. So what we want to go ahead and do with our draw grid method is we actually want to draw the little grids on the screen. However, before we actually know what to draw on the screen, we need to actually create um, a, a declaration of what our box sizes are going to be. Because this is going to be a grid with several boxes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple private final variables that indicate what our box size is going to be. So we're going to say private um, final int box height. And we're just going to set it equal to 5. And then we're going to say private final int box width equal to 5 again. And then we can go ahead and say private uh, final int box uh, length equal to, and let's just say 30. And then we're going to say private f final int. Uh, well, this is actually should be called grid. So we're going to say grid width and grid height. Um, so what we want to do with these, uh, my bad, this is grid. Um, so what we want to do with these objects is we want to, this will actually say how many boxes are in our grid. So since each box is 5 and there's 30 boxes in a grid, it's actually going to be a size of 150 by 150 pixels. Not too big, not too small. All right, so now that we've actually created our uh, box height and width, variables, we can go ahead and start drawing a grid. So what we want to do is we simply want to draw lines down the screen uh, that will represent our grid. The first thing we want to do actually is draw a rectangle that outlines the entire thing. So what we want to do is say g.drawRect. And then we want to start at 0, 0. And then after we start at 0, 0, we want the width and the height. Well, the width and the height of the grid is going to go ahead and be our grid width, which is how many boxes are in the uh, width and then the box width. So the grid width and the box width will indicate how many um, or how big our thing needs to be. So the height is going to be with the same style, grid height times box height. Oh my gosh, I can't type. So now that we've actually drawn our outside rectangle, we can actually go ahead and draw the lines. So what we want to do is we actually want to scroll through in a for loop um, all of the points that we're going to need to draw a line at. So we're going to say for int x equal to 0. Um, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to start at box width. And then we're going to say as long as x is less than or equal to, no, less than grid width times box width. And um, x is going to increment by box width every time. 
So this is sort of a convoluted um, force statement here, but what we want to do is we want to start at where the first box is going to end, because that's where our first line is actually going to want to be, since we're starting with a rectangle. Then after we're done with that, um, we're just going to want to keep going in this for loop until um, we reach the end, which is going to be our grid width times box width, as indicated by our rectangle. And then, um, so every rectangle or every line is going to have a distance of how width, wide the box is. So we're going to say g dot draw line, and our x coordinate of the line is always going to be um, what we have it at. So this is x. Our y coordinate is always going to be zero. Our secondary x coordinate is going to be the same as our first x coordinate, and our secondary y coordinate is going to be the height of the box. So that's grid or box height times box rather, yes, box height times grid height. So now we just want to do the same thing. So this was, um, I should probably comment this. So this was drawing an outside rectangle. Um, this next line here is drawing uh, the vertical lines. And so now all we need to do is draw the horizontal lines. So we're going to say drawing the horizontal lines here. And we're going to do essentially the same thing, but for y. So for y, int y equal to box height, um, y is less than grid height times box height. And then y is just going to plus equal uh, box height. And then we're just going to g dot draw a line. This time we want to move the, uh, we want to actually move the y or the x coordinate according to. So <laughs> anyway, so the first x coordinate is going to go ahead and be 0. Now the y coordinate is going to be whatever y is. Um, the second x coordinate is going to be the grid width times the box width. So it's going to be the end of the box. And the second y is going to be the same y as the first. Um, and that essentially allows us to draw a straight line across the box to the end of the rectangle. So now that we have the grid actually drawn, um, we can go ahead and mess around with, well, not like that. We can go ahead and mess around with our actual snake. But this concludes part one of how to create snake in Java. Part two will actually be uploaded around the same time, so hopefully you'll be able to watch that. And in part two, we're actually going to be drawing the snake onto the screen. So thanks for watching part one. Uh, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in part two. Thanks for watching.